This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Thanks, everybody, for downloading this week's edition of Wanna Bet. I am the Doc. John Macron joining me, my guy Phil, here to break down the world of gambling, his poker endeavor, seeing what's going on uh, in the world of online betting as well. Phil, got to tell you, I do feel a little dirty because I, I kind of vowed I wasn't going to really make any bets with or uh, against Michigan State this week. But then the, <laughs> the, the, numbers, the numbers came out because I listened to sports radio, I listened to a lot of talk, and everybody was talking about this official named Bo Borowski. And they said that, you know, they were having the discussion in terms of the context of uh, basketball flow, ruining the game, hoping and praying that Bo Borowski was not going to be the official for Michigan State. So an hour before tip, I get the word that it's going to be Bo Borowski. And I'm like, no, really? 0-4? 0-4? So the Spartans were against him. I'm thinking, you know what? Let me just drop a $40 bet and see what happens. And, of course, boom, uh, Spartans come out hot. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a loss. And then all of a sudden, Maryland came back because that stupid-ass Borowski blows the whistle (laughs) nonstop. He killed the Spartans' flow, bro. It's legit. I'm not being a homer here. He killed the flow of that game. The Spartans were running. They were hitting their shots. Little bit ticky tack fouls got Maryland back in the game, and the Spartans couldn't recover because they got pissed. Hey, you know what? Hey, you never know, dude. Unfortunately, we heard Stranger Things years ago. What was the what was the ref's name that had that big ass scheme going on in the NBA where he's where he's fixing games with his calls? I can't remember it off the top of my head, but hey, I'll be honest with you, buddy. Anything is possible, especially with much money is flowing around. Especially with the uh, all this online activity now, <laughs> there's tons of opportunities. I'm sure if he if they go about things the right way to get to get to an official here or there. Yeah, you're talking <laughs> about you're talking about Tim Donahue with the, with the great uh, things that they were doing too. Well, I think our Major League Baseball officials had problems too because they were shady as fuck too. They were taking the first class tickets and doing some shady shit to kind of uh, uh, downgrade it and keep the money or upgrade it and all that whatever nonsense they were trying to do. Allegedly, and they got in trouble for it because they were uh, taking extra benefits. And so, yeah, whenever big money's involved, people will start to do shady things. And uh, yet, I'm thinking in a year or two, you might hear of maybe a handful of college athletes that maybe laid down and took some, uh, you know, uh, point shaving situations to the next level because the money's huge. And when you see now, you blink, right? And it's Michigan State Spartans presented by Rocket Mortgage. And everybody's talking about how embarrassing the Spartans were with that stupid announcement. I talked about it on another podcast. There's money everywhere, and it's not going to the place where it's being driven the most. And it's sick, too, because now in March, everything is about March Madness, the tournament, Big Ten tournament, championship week. All this money is flowing into everybody's pocket, my pocket, your pocket, except, through the action. Except the kids. Except the kids. And, and what's what's their autograph worth, really? They gave them like a bone. Say, okay, you can go out and get an autograph, which is what? Four or five hundred bucks one time? You're not making any big money compared to the billions of the NCAA. Yeah, you know what? I mean, and, and I, I've gotten into this with numerous people. He said, these kids are, I understand these kids are getting scholarships to go to school, but let's level with you. Uh, let's level with each other. Most of them, they're focused on this. This is it. So, their degree really doesn't mean that much to them. They're worried about getting to the next level or it's bust. So I, I would be trying to find any way I could to monetize my situation given given their their current predicament. So I couldn't be mad at them in any way. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Did you, did you get into the main event? Uh, I You know what? Let's back up, too, because you had texted me on Sunday. It was a great day, too. The Spartans... Um, Got to beat Michigan. Beat Michigan. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was fun. Uh, obviously, took a little cash out there. I took Michigan. Uh, I took Michigan State on the money line, which was good there. Uh, quick cash out there. It was good to see the Spartans rebound and things like that. So that was good. But you had said that you had finally. I think you said you had aces in a thirty dollar uh, online tournament. You got in over a hundred big blinds in all in, and you, it held up. So you got to play. Take me through the, the the tournament, the buy-in, and what ended up happening. Because I, I, I totally forgot to ask where you finished. 
Oh, so so it was the fifty dollar mini main event on Poker Stars. I uh, like I said, for probably within the first three orbits, I had gotten aces all in against queens and aces held. So I doubled up to about two hundred big blinds. Um, I picked up a couple little pots here and there. I was all, like, by the time the first break hit, we were down to like I think I had about one hundred twenty big blinds. But that was just with like the adjustments to the blind sizes. I ended up losing a big. I ended up losing a big pot with queens, uh, where somebody uh, backdoored two pair <laughs> after calling calling it all in on the flop. So I got chopped in half, and then basically I just I just ended up blinding out. We I think I finished like it was like the structure wasn't that bad, but it seemed to be. I thought it was going to be a little slower than it actually was, and I finished like I finished probably around nine thirty. I busted. I got. I moved in pre-flop with Ace Four because I was. I only had like uh, thirteen big blinds left, and uh, I, I ran into. I ran into a bigger ace, and the, uh, the Ace Queen held up. So what'd you so, what'd you end up finishing? Uh, I, I finished. I think about like three hundred, three hundred ish somewhere. They, were, they paid out the. They paid out like a hundred and thirty. So like you said, I'll be honest. I didn't even look after 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 the rant. After the queens got busted in, in the way they did, I just sort of like, I was sort of deflated. So I, I tried my best to like grind it out, but I really couldn't. I had a maniac on my left too. Like he had, he had 200 big blinds at the time. Like, so I really couldn't like get into any spots or open any pots up because like, I was basically like, I, I, I was basically at his mercy. Like I really couldn't maneuver too much instead, unless I like wanted to just stick it all in pre-flop. So Pretty can a pretty interesting situation. Oh, well, that shit happens, and that's the tough part about like we talked about with cards is that you know you're gonna have people online that just get it in with uh, nonsense. Did you think about playing the main event? No, you, you know what? I was I've been just trying to like sort of take. I only put twenty bucks in. I'm back up to like I, I was down to zero again Sunday. I'm I'm back up to like sixty bucks. I I you know I've been cashing here and there playing some different variations. I played, I, I made a deep run in a PLO tournament Tuesday. Uh, I made a deep run in a PLO uh, high low tournament uh, Wednesday. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm making the runs. It's just, there's some things that I got to start working on to like, to go ahead and close out the tournaments. There's some spots that I'm probably not picking up and taking where, where I should be, especially given my image. So I, th- those are things that I, I'll just have to work on while I continue to play. Okay, not too bad. It's just a tough game, man. It's really tough, especially in the online world. It feels like it's just created for action, and that's where it went. Oh, oh yeah. For, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely created for action, bro. Yeah. But I've been looking at some bets, man. You, we, you know, I, I, I know we haven't been talking. We didn't get into that yet, but I really like uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia and Chicago. I, I really thought that the Bulls were going to sort of handle them yesterday, and uh, they played on Thursday night after the All Star break. the The Seventy Sixers came out and crushed them, and now the, uh, they got to play against uh, the Chicago Bulls. Have to play against the Heat, and the Heat are minus two and a half. The Heat are the Heat have won eight out of nine going into the break. Uh, I would sort of like to take them in, in this spot, especially after the Bulls couldn't beat a depleted Seventy Sixers team. So. Do you take a look at anything else? No, I haven't. Uh, my my focus has been on college basketball, looking at Michigan. Obviously, in the first round, I thought that was very fair uh, to play Maryland. They've had success. And uh, obviously, with rest uh, in their situation, I felt like losing Michigan State would make uh, Juwan Howard definitely a little bit salty, got himself ejected, and the team you know, rallied. And after a slow start, <laughs> they played really well. So I think Michigan – probably is in line. I can't I, I'm personally hoping it's going to be Michigan and Illinois for for it all because I think that will really kind of dictate because there was a little skirmish between Michigan and Illinois in regards to who's really the Big 10 uh regular season champ because uh, Illinois had more wins. Yeah. Yeah, at least in Illinois, and especially what Illinois did to them a, a little over a week ago now they 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 took it to them too to sort of make that point. So that that would definitely make the game uh, the championship game a little more interesting. Ohio State doesn't look as convincing. I actually wouldn't be surprised to see Purdue beat them today. To be honest with you, yeah. So, it's a, do you think who's the, who do you think's the odds-on favorite at this point to win the Big Ten uh, tournament title? 
Well, I mean, Michigan started out super duper slow. I mean, but you know, they ended up coming back and winning pretty easily. So I, I, I would, it'd be hard to bet against them right now, but you know, they said, I, I do, t- I do try and factor in like sort of recency, Illinois taking it to them the way they did. That would be a good matchup. And they're probably, I, I think it would probably, it, it could go either way. So I'm looking right now online. Uh, I, lo- I see some of the games in regards to Utah uh, right now. It's a 10 o'clock game on Friday. Uh, I'm seeing at this point in time, Utah minus 17. Wow. Uh, bets. Yeah. Uh, bet online. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, yeah, that's crazy. Like I know Houston's bad. Um, I mean, Houston's like Houston's like really bad, but I mean, that's a big ass line to cover in an NBA game. You know, now if it's college, some of these college teams have been like absolutely like, do you see what uh, North Carolina uh, ended up doing to Notre Dame on Wednesday night? I mean, they Ooh. they they went on a forty to two, forty two to four run in like d- damn near damn near like nine minutes. So I mean, but like the pros, like that's that seems like a big ass line. And I know I know Houston just got beat up last night. So I mean. I would I would probably steer more if I was going to do anything. That over's probably got to be at around two fifty. It's somewhere in the two fifteen to two twenty range. I'd be I feel a little more safer betting that under. To be honest with you, I don't like that's a big ass line to cover even for the pros. You know what I mean? Yeah. Saturday, you got Detroit going on the road taking on Brooklyn, getting eleven and a half. And once again, I mean Detroit. Detroit beat them outright after getting a big spot at home. They, they were getting eight and seven and a half or eight and a half like a couple weeks ago, and they beat Brooklyn outright. I mean, once again, I'd rather I'd rather take a look at what the over is. The over is probably going to be a little higher than that, just because Brooklyn doesn't play defense. So I'd feel I might feel a little safer betting that over. It's been weird, man. Like I would have totally thought that Chicago, especially with Simmons and Embiid being out Thursday night, that Chicago would have had Chicago was at full strength. I thought that would have been way easier, but they ended up getting pounded. Like, were, were they just not prepared or what? Look, <laughs> you know look, what I mean? Like, looking at the Pistons, nine and twenty-six straight up against the spread, fifteen, fifteen and three, right there on even. You believe that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hey, trust me, I I do. Like that's why I didn't want to touch state yesterday. Yeah. I absolutely didn't. I, now I didn't go and I didn't do as much research as you into the into the rest and whatnot. But once again, I I. I would have thought. Do you really think State's going to get in now? Like uh, that's a good question. Okay, okay. Now here's the deal. It is uh, a real scenario in regards to the fact that we should be panicking, but you have to recognize that Michigan State's got a name brand and they got some wins. They got uh, wins against Michigan, wins against Illinois, Ohio State, and when you look at the scenario in which you recognize that. No other team has more than one AP top five win, and State's got three. I think that puts yeah. them right in the right spot. And I think, you know, which was crazy because, you know, I'm online all the time on Twitter at Detroit Podcast, and I'm looking at what people are saying, and I'm getting riled up because, uh, which I think you failed to, to uh, acknowledge. Maybe you did online. I know your wife did. Thursday was my birthday. And I, I sent you a message, dude. I okay. called. I, I sent you a message. I, I don't. I'm not going to go online, dude. If I, I if I'm going to talk to one of my friends, I'm yes. Gonna give him a, so you texted me. Or shoot him a text. Okay, you texted me. I'll, I'll have to check. Yeah, I know. I know. I get so many and things like that. But online, because I personally go back and say, hey, thank you to everybody. I pay more attention to it, so I'll go back and look and refresh my memory. But the point of the matter is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I like that you said that. Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought real fast. What was I going with this? No, we we were talking about you were going back and forth looking over state's record and yes, uh, like, yes, okay, yeah, looking over their record against uh, the their opponents and things like that. They have to get in, and you look at what's going on with Michigan State and the fact that uh, they went through COVID, and it's just a weird year. But I'm of the opinion that you know when you look at. Michigan State's resume. You think the tournament's better without the likes of Duke, Kentucky, and a Michigan State? So I say, heck no. I know a lot of people online were messaging me, and my point was, I gathered it, 
Someone had told me, because I was all rah-rah on my birthday, I was like, oh yeah, Michigan State's going to win, I finally got a day off, I'm going to sit my ass at home, watch the game, get all excited, and someone said, you know what, I know you're a big uh, Spartan honk, but if they lose, it's actually better for the Spartans, and I'm like, all right, I'll entertain this nonsense, I'm a big fan, I want them to win, but tell me why, and it made sense. Now that they lost, the perception of them is worse they're going to be a 10, maybe potentially 11 seed, which takes them away from the number one or number two seed in the second game. So if that loss was strategic in any kind of way, they actually, they, they actually help themselves because they don't have to play the big dog until the Sweet 16. So if it yeah. works out nicely and they get rest and they figure out how to rebound, they figure out how to play transition basketball, and they handle refs, because it's so crazy, you know, that whole Michigan State thing just sends me off on a tangent because they're a physical team, but when the refs call it tight, they can't adapt to it. It's so stupid that Tom Izzo should have his team ready to play in all different kind of styles, up and down, physical, non-physical, refs calling the, the, blowing the whistle, refs not blowing the whistle, but they get so rattled by the fact that officials slow things down. That loss to Maryland was really a, a pure disgrace, but... If, if one other person can help Aaron Henry, you can get hot for two games on a weekend. Poof, Thursday, Saturday, boom, two tight games. I could see, I could see them losing in, in any scenario, first game, second game, or you're not getting in at all. That's, what, that's what's crazy about March. Yeah, yeah. At like least I, I, I guess that's, that's pretty fair. I would just think that like, I mean, it, the point that you're probably going to get, that they're going to get in is that those three big wins. So yeah, that's, that's really tough to keep them out, especially with three quality wins. And I know they're just barely over 500, but I mean, like you said, given, given the way that everything's shaking down with, with COVID and everything, it's going to be, it, it's going to be pretty tough to keep them out. I would assume with their record and whatnot in those, those three big wins. So yeah, a lot of people have been betting golf lately. They're betting, uh, you know, DeChambeau betting, uh, Marikawa, all that good stuff. It is really crazy. How many people really love throwing and they got, you got pretty decent. If you can catch two or three guys, you're getting plus thousand at times. Sometimes with these, some of these uh, bets on Wednesday for these uh, golf odds. Yeah, I uh, I actually I took a couple bets last week where I took uh, I took Rory to win his first round matchup, and I took uh, Jason uh, Karkawa, uh, Karkow, uh to win his first round matchup, and those both ended up paying off. He said, um, my buddy that I bowl with on Friday nights, he actually has done some like a, a little bit of his own modeling, like a little old school way, like not like some of the you know like sports line and whatnot, but. Like it's pretty interesting because I compared his model to the sports line model, and they had predicted pretty much the same top ten, just some spots varied a little bit. So it was pretty interesting to like, you know, like like the analytics for golf seem to be a lot closer. Um, I would feel in some of these predicting spots than a lot of the other sports. So yeah, right now pretty. E- Right now, I'm looking at golfodds.com. Dustin Johnson, twelve to one. DeChambeau, eighteen to one. McElroy, sixteen to one. John Rahm, fourteen to one. So you get some good good value if you can hit the right if the, the the right individual. Yeah, if you can, yeah if you can hit it at the right time, absolutely. What uh what else are you looking at for this weekend? Oh, I I got I got another one for you. So <laughs> same bond adventure in VCU. Mm-hmm. Same bond same bond adventure is minus one and a half. I would jump. Jump, jump all over that. They played twice. They lo- they lost a close game to VCU, and I believe they were on the road. They lost by three, and then the, uh, or, or a month earlier they beat them by thirteen. And they uh, uh, St. Bonaventure has been they've won uh, five out of their last six. So I definitely be jumping all over that one this week, and they, they play tomorrow. Okay, so on, so on Saturday uh, the play is taking St. Bonaventure uh, pl- in the points. Uh, yeah, plus, yeah, plus yeah, one? They're, yeah. They're yeah. They're they're only spot. They're only spot one and a half. Like you said, the uh, their game, the games haven't been close. That was the VCU game was the closest game they had, and they they lost that by three. They they were they won their last five out of six, and they they've been plus seven in all plus seven in all those games too. So so you said uh, St. Bonaventure's getting the points, or are they laying one and a half? No, no, they're laying one and a half. So okay, so you're, you're like St. Bonaventure should have no problem with VCU uh, taking taking doing some damage. 
That, yeah, that's that, 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 and then that Miami Heat pick tonight. Those are going to be my two picks that I'd look at going into this weekend. So, um, what is it? Miami plus uh, what? Miami's minus two and a half. I, so, I know they're on the road at Chicago, but like I said, given Chicago's performance against Philadelphia on Thursday night, I would. I'd be hard pressed to see Miami losing to them. So okay, so Miami laying, and uh, as well as uh, St. Bonaventure. So Ville's two plays: Miami on Friday and St. Bonaventure on Saturday. Not bad. And just peek at some of the big spreads too, as well, because Houston maybe might not get trounced by more than seventeen. That's that's really uncompetitive. And the Pistons, you know, they're hit or miss. I mean, you really it's it's, it's even money because they're either going to show up and win the game and, and cover easily. Or they're gonna just lay down <laughs> and, and take care of business too. That's a that's a crazy situation too because of what they did. What do you think of Blake Griffin? Does that improve? It doesn't do it a whole heck of a lot. I don't know if you if you heard this. I thought it was funny when it was announced that Blake Griffin signed with the Nets. Their odds got worse that they were gonna win it all. Yeah, I I don't really see like what role like is he gonna fill in for KD while KD's hurt right now. I mean. Like they needed a center, they've been terrible against the center. They they need some rim protection. So I really don't understand what role he's going to come in unless he's going to be like leading that second unit. So I mean, you know, if it, like you said, and we talked about this years ago when the Pistons got him. Like if the Pistons had gotten him a few years like earlier, it would have been a big deal. But he was sort of past his prime and they really didn't. It was just him and Drummond at the time. Now he goes to Brooklyn. Brooklyn's got a pretty decent team as it is. They just needed some rim protection. I really can't believe that they couldn't get something done with Drummond there. That would have been like, that would have been like the, the play that would have been the play that would have made them huge favorites in my opinion. But if, if they could have got Drummond because you add rim protection with all that scoring, like it's it would be really really hard to beat that team. Then you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And looking at uh, the Big Ten this weekend, Michigan uh, prior to the Maryland game was sixteen and six against the spread, plus one seventy five to win it all. Uh, they're saying here at SI, uh, Juwan Howard's crew will need to rebound in the Big Ten tournament after losing two of their last three to Illinois and Michigan State. The value play looks like. Illinois seventeen nine against the spread plus three seventy five to win the Big Ten tournament. Is that, yeah, that that's that, a, I don't I don't I don't have a I wouldn't have a problem with that bet right now. Like you said, just given re, just given recency and everything, Illinois like played them. They they beat the doors off of them at at Michigan. So I would I would totally be fine with making that play. That would have been too bad you didn't jump on that a week ago. I'm sure you could have got them a plus probably six hundred going into this weekend. Ooh, man, that'd be amazing. Michigan and Illinois, uh, there'd be some uh, finagling there, too, because you got the – I'm always a, a fan of the psychological aspect of sports. You got Illinois that wants to show that the, that, that their first win, which was a dominating performance, wasn't a fluke. And you got Michigan, who's been chirping a little bit. And I think in the Big Ten with how it's going to be now, today's uh, Friday as we're recording this, you play Friday, Saturday – Two teams that are going to be playing two games in a row uh, on that third game. It's like a war of attrition, you know, because you're playing three games in three days and anything can happen. You, you could see it any different way. So that's an interesting, uh, interesting value play there, plus 375. Or take a look at Illinois because of the way they play. Take a look at what they do in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, they might be the team that's on the warpath that's looking to be the underdog uh, in Michigan, things like that. Because Michigan, that you know, that first half versus Maryland was not good. Yeah, oh yeah, like you said, and that's the thing. I mean, after they came out of the COVID break too, when they played, who, who I can't remember right now. Uh, I'd have to take a look. But they came out. They came out uh, after the COVID break, and they were getting they were getting pounded by uh, I believe it was Wisconsin. Yeah, they uh, Michigan uh, Wisconsin was like getting two, and Wisconsin had had them down by fourteen, and Michigan ended up losing. So. Is this maybe the recipe? They get too much time off and they come out a little rusty. I mean, I don't know that that might be a conditioning thing or something. Then, <laughs> <laughs> do you dabble now because Major League Baseball is kicking off? Are there plays that you have looked at, or when you saw that sports betting became legal, anything that came to your attention in the world of baseball? Because I know it's every day. There's, <laughs> I don't, I haven't even ever looked. I've never yet 
to uh, place a bet on baseball, especially in game. What's out there? Is it a market? Is there something to it? Or is it best to stick to basketball and football at this point in time? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, if I'm going to do anything, I, I haven't looked too far into it, but I know two things. The Dodgers are going to be pretty good this year again, and the Tigers are going to be pretty bad this year again. So betting the money line with the Dodgers and betting against the, the Tigers on the money line, those are probably going to be two of your safer bets if you did that if you did that the whole season. So you could probably end up making making a decent profit just from just from doing those two plays. Like, now, now in baseball, right up, is it similar? Right is, it, is, is it similar to hockey and similar to other sports where it's like, okay, it's going to be the Dodgers minus two runs or one and a half, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, you, you'll see some lines minus minus one, minus one and a half, two, two and a half, et cetera. It's, I, I don't see I don't see the lines getting bigger than that. But um, yeah, like especially with the Dodgers. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know how Atlanta. I, I think Atlanta got a little better this year during the off season. So, and we all, unfortunately, all of us Detroiters know what's going on with uh, our Tigers. So, it, like you said, it's pr- they're pretty easy to bet against right now. So, yeah, that's sweet. Okay, I'll check it out. We'll look into that more as we continue to record this podcast to see what happens in the world of uh, baseball gambling. I think that's a little stretch too, because uh, you realize that it, there's so many variables. Teams get hot at the, at the right time, depending on the, the, the starting pitcher, things like that. I wonder uh, some of the interesting side bets that you can make in regards to how far the pitcher will go, uh, balls and strikes, uh, who's going to get the first home run, stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see in regards to uh, baseball betting. The, uh, yep. the, the wings, the wings, uh, I thought, it was pretty much a straightforward bet, and I think that was a fair play that a lot of people made before we get out of here. The Wings in, in Tampa Bay, uh, when the line came out uh, over under at five, five and a half, I thought that that was pretty straightforward, that it was going to be a high-scoring affair, and many people I saw online were, were taking the Wings to go way over, and it went over in the first period. It was like 3-2 <laughs> yeah. it was, it, it was with like four, with like uh, five minutes left in the first period. I'm like, oh, I should have jumped on it, but hockey's tough to bet because – the flow of a game is so important. You can get goals uh, in a hurry, or these goaltenders tighten it up so much that you don't get those goals. So uh, definitely betting against the Wings is safe, but the the Wings and uh, Tampa going over was, I thought, a very safe play based on what what people were recommending. Yeah, well, yeah. If you, I, I believe if you looked at the past few games that they played, they had some pretty high scoring affairs. I I think out of the last four games, I think they all had over six goals, except there might have been one game in there that they got to like three or four. But so, like you said, you know, unfortunately, we know how our Detroit sports are going right now, buddy. So it's a pretty safe bet to bet high scoring affairs and our, our team's losing. Isn't that pretty safe to say? Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff, man. Okay. I'm definitely going to take your, I'm going to take your word for it. Miami and St. Bonaventure laying the points. So you expect them to cover, you expect them to win outright Miami and St. Bonaventure doing their thing. All hey, right. Real quick. One, one little gamble. What this might, this might be a little bit of a stretch. If you want to do a sneaky, if you want to try a sneaky parlay, Florida state, Basically, is going to get into the is going to get into the championship game, uh, and they're going to play against Georgia Tech. If you want to parlay Georgia Tech and possibly Illinois, you could probably get at least eight. That should be at least eighteen hundred plus eighteen hundred uh, on your money. So, so you might want to take a look at that. As well, uh, as well, futures. It would be you said Illinois, Florida State, and who's the third team to round it out to win that win their win their division and win their conference? No, no, I. No, it was just those two. I just I I would just think that Illinois and Florida State right now to win it all. Uh, to win it all, juicy. Illinois and yeah. to win it all. Okay, Illinois and Florida State. Look at you always repping Florida State, huh? All right, they never, I got I, I got to dog. I got to yo Charlie Ward and Peter Ward, dude, for life. For life. All right, my friend. Make sure you follow the network at Detroit Podcast anywhere that you find and listen to podcasts. All you got to do because we're everywhere. Type in Detroit Sports Podcast. Get some free plays, have some fun, make some small wagers, and make watching a St. Bonaventure game worthwhile. Because if it wasn't for gambling, I think that a lot of sports would have found a lot of people not watching. And with college basketball in full swing, it's all good, baby. Get in some brackets. We'll talk about that as we approach the NCAA tournament. Talk soon, Phil. All right, buddy. Be good.